Hi everybody, Dugras here with Dugras Reports. Today I'll be breaking down my latest rip trip to the Gulf Shores of Florida and Alabama. In case you haven't seen previous explanations before, I use the term rip trip as an acrostic. R stands for rental, as in a rental car. I stands for in, I-N-N, like lodging. And then P, of course, for plane, your airplane travel to get there and back. If you can cover those three things, you've covered most of your travel expenses. Although I'm gonna go just a little further even and tell you how I made the entire trip free, including incidentals like food, snacks, and sightseeing. On this particular YouTube channel, I talk about finding epic value for the average American that usually overlaps into the space of travel, credit cards, points, and rewards. Does that sound interesting to you? If it does, please subscribe to the channel and please click the thumbs up button. Let's move on. R, rental car. I rented a car from Avis and the original price was around $300 roughly. Now, of course, I'm driving in the car right now, so I can't look at anything. I'm going from memory off of these, but I will put confirming statements on the screen throughout. When I pay for the rental car, I use a card that helps make it free. Can you guess which credit card I used? I'll give you a clue. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, I've used this lots of other times. Go ahead, pause the video, put a comment down below and let me know what your guess is. All right, ready? It's the US Bank Altitude Reserve and their real-time rewards. So the way real-time rewards works is that after you make the purchase, subject to certain minimums, as long as it's the category of travel, US Bank will send you a text message asking if you want to redeem this many points at a 1.5 ratio to cover that travel charge. And if you do, they will essentially cash out your points for you at that 1.5 cents per point ratio and apply it to your balance. Now an interesting feature, which could be bad, could be good, I say it's good as long as you know about it, is they base that off the initial pending charge, not the settled charge. So as soon as Avis runs your credit card, you'll get the offer. Like most rental car companies, they charge you a little more than the actual rental to make sure they can cover any overages. So the actual charge that hit my credit card was a bit over $500, so I had to redeem enough points for that. Was it around 30, 35,000 points, something like that? I'll put it on the screen here. So I had a credit of uh, 300, excuse me, over $500 for real-time rewards, and that's helpful because I can use some of that overage to cover incidentals like meals, for example. Now, the actual settled charge ended up being somewhere around $380, $390. That was because of the original $300 charge, plus I had a late return. Uh, my flight was delayed about an hour to an hour and a half. I suppose that's my fault, but yikes. $70 plus tax for being one hour late to return your car. I'm gonna try calling Avis and see as a courtesy if they would reverse that but I don't have my hopes up very much. Avis has not impressed me recently, and this will probably be the last time that I use them. Moving on to the I, in, in other words, lodging. Now this was a four day, three night trip, and the first day I had booked my lodging in Panama City Beach, Florida. This was significant because as a child back in the 80s and 90s, my family frequently vacationed in Panama City Beach. And I took it a step further than that. I thought about staying in the exact motel that my family had stayed in when I was growing up. It was kind of a rundown roach motel that was probably nice when it was built back in the 50s called In Paradise. And the front desk lady when she answered the phone would say it just like this. In Paradise? Get it? Because you're in paradise. Anyhow, I found out by looking at Google Maps that sometime in the last 20 years, In Paradise had been bulldozed and they built a Hyatt place on top of it. Well, that worked out perfectly. I'm gonna stay in the exact location where my family used to vacation in the 80s and 90s 
and I think once even lapping into the very early 2000s. But instead of play, staying at a kind of rundown family motel, I will stay at a nice Category 3 Hyatt Hotel. And it was pretty nice. Um, the only downside, this wasn't the hotel's fault, was as I was driving into town, I was planning on having this great nostalgic moment. Right at dusk, I kind of timed it out, seeing all these things I remember. Because I probably visited Panama City Beach seven to eight times uh, in my youth, and then a couple times in my teens and early 20s. But uh, fate had other plans. Uh, it got kind of dark, and right as I pulled into town, it started raining cats and dogs. And I mean, this was rain. I've never driven in so much rain. Now, I've driven in worse storms, but if we're just talking about the volume of rain coming down, this was really bad. So, so much for my nostalgic drive into Panama City Beach. To pay for the Hyatt Place, it was a Category 3. It was standard rate. It was not off-peak. It was not peak, just standard. 5,000 times 3, 15,000 points per night. And I transferred that from Chase uh, ultimate rewards to have enough Hyatt points. So my first night was completely free. For nights two and three, I moved over to Foley, Alabama, which is just north of Gulf Shores, Alabama, about 10 or so miles off the beach to save a little bit, and stayed at a very nice Holiday Inn Express there. That Holiday Inn Express was 21,500 points per night and I also used IHG points to cover that. Now, thinking of the value I got for both of those, uh, with Hyatt, it's really easy to think of a baseline. If I were to cash out those chase points, it would be one cent per point. So the break even price on points would be if the hotel cost more than $150 for my one night, and I'm confident that it did. I don't have the exact figure with me, but if I remember correctly, it was just under $300 for the cash rate, and that would be very, very close to um, two cents per point. 15,000 points, uh, double that, move the decimal to two places, uh, you've got $300. So I got around two cents per point on my Hyatt points. By the time you add in paid parking, um, it would be probably over that. An interesting feature is I don't have the top tier Hyatt status of Globalist. I only have Explorist from that temporary promotion, and they gave me free parking, even though everybody else had to pay um, $19 and change for parking. So I'm not sure if that's new with Hyatt, that all statuses get free parking, or if the front desk just waived it to be nice. When we look at the IHG property, the Holiday Inn Express, that was, in terms of cents per point, a situation where I would think of the baseline, the break-even, as half a cent per point. That's because with IHG, you can frequently buy their points for half a cent each. So, just for the sake of easy math, it was 21.5 per night. I'm gonna round up to 22,000 IHG points per night. So, if we take that by two, that's 11,000, move the decimal two places, and you've got $110. So as long as the cash price was at least $110 per night, with all taxes included, you know that I've at least broken even. I'm confident it was more than that. I don't have it with me. I'll put a screenshot on the screen. It wasn't an outstanding value, but it was a good, solid value. Now, I think about those IHG points like this. I got most of those from a sign-up bonus when I signed up for my IHG business credit card. So I have the points, as long as I'm at least breaking even, or kind of even close to breaking even, I might as well use them. So I did. Therefore, no out of cost, excuse me, no out of pocket cost for any of my lodging. Lodging, free. Moving on to the plane, or the air transport. On the way down to the Gulf Coast, I flew from Des Moines, Iowa to Panama City, using Southwest with a layover in St. Louis. I had accrued several credits on Southwest because my wife used to have the Amex Platinum. And I used almost all of the airline credit 
with the trick where you can buy relatively inexpensive Southwest flights and then cancel them and you get to keep the flight credit. Uh, given the ability to double dip in the last year, she had the card for two years and then I double dipped in the last year. So three calendar years worth $200 each. We had somewhere around $600 in credits. Plus I had some other paid travel that I'd canceled from the past. I believe I had somewhere around $900 in Southwest credits coming into this. And that one-way flight was, I don't remember, between 200 and 300. 200 and 300 dollars so no out-of-pocket cost to me on that i suppose you could argue i would have to assign some portion of the annual fee from that platinum card that we've paid in the past to that but that's just too complicated so i view this as no net cost out of pocket on the way excuse me on the way home i flew from pensacola back to des moines with a layover in dallas got to visit the capital one lounge which was really awesome and to pay for that, I used some American Airlines miles that I had on hand from spending, savings bonuses, shopping portal bonuses, etc. It was 22,000 American Airlines points. Those are points that I already had on hand. So other than the small fee of, I believe, $5.60 that you pay for taxes and the 911 fee, there was no cost. I'll account for that at the very end in my overall spreadsheet. All right, so that takes care of the RIP part. Before I transition into how I covered all the incidentals like sightseeing and meals, I will also briefly mention just an interesting observation. People in Florida and the Gulf Coast of Alabama have a lot of exposure to influencers, people that want to put their videos on TikTok or Instagram or something like that. I saw three different occasions on Panama City Beach. I went out early the morning of checkout, somewhere around 7 in the morning, to take a look around because I had a tight schedule. And as I was walking back to the motel, off in the distance I see a young lady in a two-piece swimsuit posing for a camera person uh, in all the poses you would associate with being a TikTok or Instagrammer and having someone take her pictures. Uh, later that day, I toured Fort Pickens near Pensacola, which is an 1800s fort. And I'll put a picture up here. There was a young lady in a floral dress doing a lot of poses that you would associate with a young lady trying to look very feminine on her favorite social media platform. So she either really loves this wall at Fort Pickens or there was someone down the tunnel to our left taking her photo. And then thirdly, in Gulf Shores, Alabama, I was eating at a restaurant that had open air sides so I could see out onto the beach. And there were some young men walking down the sidewalk trying to be really cool guys. I think they were filming their own music video or something like that. And they kept going back and forth trying to do it over and over again. It was actually kind of amusing. All right, so let's take a look at the incidentals and overall how I made the trip free. All right, let's put it all together. I like to do this on spreadsheets. So in the first section, I put my restaurant expenses and then have my spreadsheet total it up for me. Got my total of snacks here. The spreadsheet totals that up. Gas, now yes, I only had one gas station stop on this trip because I had a hybrid vehicle, so it was very fuel efficient. This is where I would put my paid lodging if I had any, but both of them were all point stays. And here's my miscellaneous activities like sightseeing, that kind of stuff. Now you'll notice one of them was the Pensacola Bay Fort Pickens cruise. And I've charged that to my Capital One Venture X card and used the travel eraser feature to make it go away by using 2,600 points. Um, I also tried charging my Des Moines Airport parking fee to the Capital One Venture X, hoping I would have the option there. But unfortunately, it did not recognize that as a travel expense. Here's my transportation items, and I did use my Altitude Reserve travel credit to offset my Southwest Early Bird check-in. And then, um, oh, I just realized I listed Des Moines parking twice. So we'll just take that out. I didn't pay for it twice. I only paid for it once. Hey, that's going to be a better result. Um, and then here's that Altitude Reserve real-time rewards credit. Uh, for the rental car, which, like I said, they base that on the 
uh, initial charge, not the final settled charge, taxes and fees on my American flight, and then the uh, altitude reserve general travel credit. The altitude reserve credits you up to $325 per year in travel and dining. I still had some left, so it triggered that. So in a way, I kind of sort of triple dipped. I earned points on the rental car, I got my real-time rewards, and I got the travel credit. So uh, when you add all these things together, my total trip was $16.01. Uh, before I realized my airport mistake, I used just a little bit of pay myself back on Chase. Uh, it was on the Inc. Business Cash, which one of the current pay yourself back categories is internet and cable. So I offset a uh, small, I think it was a cell phone bill, which counted as the category and got 1.1 cent per point. Uh, not the most amazing uh, cents per point, but it's better than one cent per point. So on a net basis, I actually uh, paid myself $2.68. So I don't owe anything at all from my travel savings account over to my family budget. Uh, technically, my family budget actually owes me $2.68. Uh, over here, I list my non-cash expenses, which is just uh, points used. Or in this case, there's also some Southwest flight credits, as I mentioned. If you appreciate videos like this, where I do a very specific breakdown on the math of how I take my trips, please put a comment down below and let me know you appreciate that. They aren't my best viewed videos, so any little encouragement helps. If you have a question, also make a comment. I will try my best to answer each one of them personally. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you get any value whatsoever out of this kind of video, and please click the thumbs up button. And of course, may your spending be frugal, and may your points be plenteous. Thanks for watching.